Hey there guys, Fertis here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Level Design Essential series. In today's video we are going to be showing you how you can create your very first material inside of Unreal Engine 4. Now in the past few videos we have shown you how you can use materials and apply them to a surface to give it a bit of colour. What I want to focus on in today's video rather is more how to create the material and how to get the look and the style that you're after. Now what we do have as part of the sample content inside of Unreal Engine 4 is a whole bunch of ready-made materials and we've also got a whole bunch of ready-made textures. And we're going to be using these textures to create our own materials that are slightly different to the ones that we've got already. Now before I go any further, what I do want to do is just quickly take a moment to explain exactly what a material is, so you understand exactly what we're going to be doing. So what you want to do is go over to your starter content on the left hand side in your content browser, go to materials, and then just open up any one of these. I'm just going to open up this m underscore wood underscore oak for now and you can see we've got all of these different nodes here. Now don't worry about all these different nodes and what they are at the moment, the important thing is that you understand that all of these textures and all of this extra information is going to be linking up to this one big main input point. Now within this main bit we have access to change the base colour, the metallic, the specularity, the roughness, the emissive colour, normal and a whole bunch more and I'm going to be explaining these in a little bit more detail as we go through creating our first material but the important thing with materials is that you understand a material is essentially a bunch of textures added together along with some other nodes and information to get the desired look and style that you're after. So essentially what a material is, a shader um, built up of textures and information, that is it. So when you open up a material you have got a couple of main areas. Now these main areas are going to be the sort of uh, the main material editor uh, where we can use all of these nodes in the middle here. And then in the top left hand side we've got our viewport which is going to allow us to see exactly what we're going to be creating and navigating around this is really really simple just click drag and rotate around the sphere if you don't want it to be a sphere you can change it to a flat plane you can change it to a cube you can change it to all kinds of different shapes and don't worry if it doesn't load up straight away just give it a couple of seconds and just like we do in the main viewport we've got the different lighting modes uh, so the different view modes but I'm not going to worry about those uh, for now and then lastly we've got the details panel and a list of all of our available nodes on the right hand side there is literally hundreds of those don't worry if you don't know what all of those are at the moment we will get into that um, as part of my material series, but I'll take you through the main ones in today's video. So what we're going to do then is within my materials, materials folder, I am going to right click in the background here and I'm going to create a new material. And this is going to be our first material and I'm going to be showing you how to bring those textures and stuff in. Now keeping with the name and convention with the rest, I'm going to call it M underscore and then just new test material and then once you've done that you should see it's going to highlight a new material and it should be grey and tiled just like this. Now what you want to do is open this up and we get to our main control point and what it's asking for is a whole bunch of information so base colour, metallic, specular. We don't have to use all of these but we're going to try and fill up the main ones to give you the main look and style that you're after. Now the first one and probably the most important one is the base colour and like it says here it defines the overall colour of the material. So what we need to do with this is find a texture for whatever we're going to create. Now for the purpose of this video I'm going to be creating a wood material. So I'm going to go over to the textures and in here we've got a whole bunch of different textures and to find the wood one all we're going to do is simply just type in wood and you can see from here we've got a couple different types of wood we can use we've got walnut, we've got pine, we've got oak, we've got um, you know all kinds of different stuff and the one I'm going to go for is here which is T underscore wood underscore pine underscore D 
and some of these different letters are just their different naming conventions. So underscore D equals diffuse, which is essentially your base color. Underscore N is your normal, and then you also have some others as well, but don't worry about those for now. So what I'm gonna do is get my D, which is my base color, and, and then I'm just going to, with this selected, I am going to open up my material editor and then just click anywhere and press T. And what this is going to do is bring in a texture sample. And if I press over here, use selected asset from content browser, it is going to use that wood material, uh, wood texture, sorry, and bring it into the texture sample. And then with this, I can grab the texture sample main node at the top here and then just drag this into the base color, give it a couple of seconds to update, and you can see we have now got what looks to be a wood material. Now we've still got a few settings that we can play around with, which I'll be explaining a little bit, such as playing around with how smooth it is, how metallic it is, how much it shines, how reflective it is, and all that good stuff. What I'm also going to do is show you another way of bringing a texture into your material editor. And instead of pressing T to create the texture sample, you can also just click, drag and drop, and that will bring it in there and then you're good to go. Now the one that I just used here was T underscore wood underscore pine underscore N. And this is our normal map. And what this normal map is meant to do is essentially give you some extra depth to your material. So when I hook this up, give it a couple of seconds to update and you'll see what I'm talking about. Some of these little, um, you know, inconsistencies in the woods, you'll find they have a bit more depth. Now, wood probably isn't the best way to show you this, but that is essentially what it does. So moving on, let's show you how we can work with some of the other settings. Now, some of these other settings don't actually require a texture for you to be able to use them. Instead, they need information. And that's where you're gonna be using a constant and a bunch of these other nodes to make that up. Now, there is a whole bunch of different ways of getting to these extra nodes that we're gonna use in a moment. The first one is by just typing in the palette on the right-hand side here and just looking for what you're after. So if you're after a constant, you can click the constant, drag and drop and place it in here. Or alternatively, you can just right-click, type constant wherever you want and it will place it at that location. So what we're gonna do is add a constant into the roughness, and this is just a normal constant. And then with this, you'll notice now that it has become really shiny, sort of like it's glossy polished wood. And basically what this roughness is doing is essentially controlling how rough it is. So zero is smooth, almost polished, and then one is going to be more matte and not very reflective. So let me show you the difference. So this is zero, this is one, and you can see in a second when it loads up, it loses its reflectiveness. So if you wanna go for a polished pine material, you'd maybe work with something like 0 0.4, and you can see that looks quite nice. And with this reflectiveness, you can see the normal map really starting to take shape as well. I'm gonna lower this down a little bit, and then I'm gonna bring this down to 0 0.2, and you can really see this material starting to come to life now. One of the other main settings that you might wanna use is your metallic. So if you're working with a metal object and you set this to one, it is going to make the shader or tell the engine that it's a metal object and it's gonna make it more reflective a bit like this. So if you're not working with a metal object, it should just be zero. And if it is a metal object, just set it to one. It's simple as that. Now this sort of looks a little bit golden. It doesn't look right. It's not meant to be metallic. So I'm actually gonna set that down to zero. And then one of the other settings that you have here is your specular. And with the specularity, it just controls how much light reflects off of this. So if I set this to one, give it a couple of seconds, you can see it's got the full reflectivity. And then if I turn this down to zero, it is just not gonna reflect any light. 
Now, bear in mind, this is different to roughness. Specularity is pretty much um, how much light reflects on it from it, whereas the roughness is essentially how smooth or rough it is. They do similar things, but they work in different ways and they need to be used differently. So generally, I like to leave my specularity to one and then just play around with the roughness and the metallic. But most importantly, we have now got a material that we can use inside of the game engine. And we also understand some of these main different types of nodes. Now, one thing I do wanna mention is that if you want to learn more about materials, I am going to be releasing a whole series dedicated to the material editor so you can create really complex, advanced materials, things like waters, lasers, whatever you wanna do, you'll be able to do it. What I am going to do is press apply in the top left hand corner to apply the changes and then make sure you save this asset so you can use it uh, wherever you want. What I'm going to do is go back to my materials and then I'm just going to drag this new pine material onto my building here around all of the edges so we can see exactly what we've done. And to me that is starting to look good. It's got the right amount of shiny for a nice little pine. What you might want to do is play around with some of these settings like I taught you in the last video. It's entirely up to you. But anyway guys, thanks for watching. Once again, stay awesome, keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.